but let me first introduce our other panelists um, for our panel. Uh, the first is Gwen Westerman Griffin. Uh, she's an enrolled member of the Sisseton Wapton Dakota Oyate. Oyate. She is currently professor in English and Humanities at Minnesota State in Mankato. Uh, she's also a poet and an award winning quilt maker. I think she won an award from what, the uh, Native American Arts Market Awards uh, last year, right? Is that what it was? Three years ago. Three years ago, yeah. That's three that, years in a row. Three years in a row, okay. So she, <laughs> she makes really good quilts. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, but I also want to say that she is one of the driving forces behind a very unique literature symposium that is traveled throughout reservations in the United States, um, the Native American Literature Symposium. Um, she's really been one of the key organizers in making sure that uh, the literary people and Native communities meet. And so most of the Native Lit Symposium meetings have been held on reservations. Um, they had a, um, for a couple of years at Mystic Lake Casino uh, Resort, and the, it was held right there. And a couple of years ago, we had it up here in Michigan at the Saginaw Chippewa Reservation. And now they're back at Mystic Lake, and I think they're going to Isleta uh, next, next year for uh, the conference in, in February. So I really uh, appreciate her efforts to bring those kinds of activities right to the reservation. Uh, that's really a fantastic uh, thing she's done with the Native Lit Symposium. Please welcome our panelists. Uh, we'll get started here. Hamitakiapi, Damakota, Winuna Himacha, Ampetu Kinde Wachia Ke Iomakpi. My name is Gwen Griffin. And uh, I greeted you in the language of my father's people, the Sistinwapitan Oyate of uh, the, the Northern Great Plains. And I was told by my um, elders, my aunties, uh, my dekshis, that um, when I go and speak in a public place, that I need to speak in our language so that people know our language is alive and that we use it on a daily basis. So I said, hello, my relatives. I am Dakota. Uh, I'm called Winuna, or firstborn girl. Um, I haven't paid the money yet to the appropriate shaman to get a real Indian name, unless you count uh, Thomas King's uh, Indian name generator. And in that case, from the Dead Dog Cafe, my name is Josephine Slithering Buffalo. For those of you who don't have Indian names, check it out. Google Thomas King and Dead Dog Cafe. <laughs> And I'm very happy to see everyone here today. The title of my, my presentation is Performance and Cultural Production in Arts and Humanities, or Don't Rain on My Indian Parade. Cultural exploitation in American higher education continues to be a problem in a wide range of fields. Uh, in arts and humanities, we are faced with um, inconsistent or non-existent guidelines that enable ethnic fraud, especially American Indian ethnic fraud, and they continue to be unchallenged. However, as indigenous activists, scholars, and artists, we do have precedents to challenge fraud within our own institutions. How many of you in this room have been witness to various forms of cultural exploitation? Okay, almost everyone. Uh, we can tick off numerous examples uh, in literature, in reporting, uh, James Fry and a million tiny pieces, a million little pieces, um, and Jason Blair of the New York Times, just to, to name two, in his study of how Americans have played Indian, uh, Philip Deloria points out that as the United States has enshrined a multiculturalism that emphasizes culture more than multi, simply knowing about Indians, African Americans, Asian Americans, and Latino Latinas has become a satisfactory form of social and political engagement. And from Dreamcatchers Made, 
in China on sale at a hobby shop or a truck stop, uh, to the inclusion of Native American wisdom at a recent conference on my own campus, exploitation of American Indian culture is almost a sport. And over the summer, uh, I had the opportunity to speak at an international conference about uh, migration and borders and its effects on American Indian people, specifically Dakota people. And um, Gordon Henry was part of that panel, Matt Fletcher. And we took a side trip to Delft, um, which is north of Amsterdam. And it was a big multicultural festival in the square of the new church. And the new church in Delft was built in the 1400s. So we thought this was a great way to get a look at the cultures in the area of, of this part of Amsterdam. We went up and down the booths. There was food and music. And we came around the corner, and we saw dream catchers <coughs> being sold by Indians from India. And we thought that was great. We took pictures standing by them. Um, and we went on down a little bit farther, and we could smell sage burning. And we thought, great, we found Indians. And we came around the corner, and there was somebody there burning sage, and uh, um, had some examples of Mexican um, indigenous music, and books on spiritualism, and other kinds of, of New Age practices. And a young man was asking this, this person about the use of, of sage. And he said that he had asthma, bronchial difficulties, and, and would sage help him, uh, heal him of that? And the, the man behind the booth said, well, do you smoke pot? Do you smoke hash? And the young man said yes. And of course, you have to remember there, this is not an illegal activity, I think. Um, and the young man said, yes, I do. And the man behind the booth said, well, mix this sage with your pot, and it will heal you. We were appalled. We stood there for quite a while waiting to talk to him, um, but he would never acknowledge that we were there, so we finally just left. So it's not just uh, an incident that happens in the United States. I think it, it goes across the globe. And rather than be charged with living in a glass house and throwing stones, um, I will focus on some aspects of this sport of, of playing Indian um, from my own direct experiences. And many of um, you will recognize similar occurrences in your own institutions. Last week, my institution uh, hosted the 27th annual Women in Spirituality Conference. A friend from New York was participating, so I browsed the program online uh, for her session time. Prominently displayed on page two of the program was um, traditions, the golden rule from diverse traditions. And there were a number of different um, places represented, Buddhist, uh, Muslim, Christian, and Native American. Those were the first two entries, Native American. 